I'm Nicole Kupchik and this is 10 Minute Tidbits. Today I'm here with Joel Green and we are going to chat about RV infarctions. All right, right ventricular infarctions. So RV infarctions, what type of MI are you worried about? Inferior MI. Yes. So if a patient has an inferior wall MI, you've got to be on the hunt for right ventricular failure or, it, or definitely extension of their MI into the right, right. ventricle. Which is about 20 to 30 percent. And they can be deadly. They can be absolutely deadly. The mortality is actually really high when patients yeah. develop RV infarction and failure. So, okay, a couple things. What does somebody look like who's having RV um, infarction? So they're going to look kind of shocky. So they're going to be yeah. that cool, that clammy, yes. that, you know, less than that poor capillary. I always say less than three seconds, but that poor capillary refill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just going to look overall like they don't feel well. Yeah. Um, they might be nauseated. Uh, they might, uh, like you said, they sweat their ECG patches yeah. off, right? Um, other things. Things you might see. So with an inferior wall MI, generally we see bradycardia. Right. But with an RV infarction, they actually get tachycardic. Yes, and there's a reason. So the right ventricle itself is very thin walled, very low pressure system. Right? But when that right ventricle infarcts, the wall gets very hypokinetic and just barely moves. Mm -hmm. So think about this equation. Cardiac output equals Heart rate times stroke volume. And what happens is the stroke volume drops, and how do you compensate? Heart rate goes. We get more goes. tachycardic. Yes, and so heart rate goes up, and that's a very normal compensation. Now they're going to get super great, uh, super hypotensive. Right. All right. How do we treat the hypotension? With this is key. Fluid. Ah, yeah, with fluid. This yeah. is very different because you would never treat an anterior wall MI with fluid, right. right? Oh, never. I mean, they'll go no. into heart failure. Yeah. But an inferior wall MI with RV infarction, we would give fluid. Why? Because they're preload dependent. Yes. So. And so what happens is that right ventricle is barely moving, so you've got to stretch. Got to give them more stretch right to get forward flow. To get better forward flow yeah. to the left. And so how do we do that with? Fluid. Yeah. yeah. So we got to give fluid. So, and that's not, that's totally counterintuitive, right? Counterintuitive. Yeah. yeah. The other but, thing that's counterintuitive is what drugs we give for these patients. Yeah. I mean, we were all taught whenever a patient comes in with chest pain, we give the old acronym MONA, which we don't Mona. do anymore. Don't teach MONA. Yes. If you're still teaching MONA, stop yeah. it. Okay. Uh, it's not MONA. It's no, MO. It's, it's just no yeah. with MO if you need yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. So let's talk about that. Um, so basically in that algorithm, you had morphine, you had oxygen, mm -hmm. you had uh, nitroglycerin, and yeah. you had aspirin. Oh. Um, oxygen, we all found out in the last few studies over the last five years that unless their sats are less than 92%, there's no reason to give them oxygen. Yeah, and you know what's fascinating? In the European guidelines that were published last fall, they actually said to avoid oxygen unless mm. the patient needs it. And the reason is that too much oxygen contributes to oxygen free radical formation, which can actually worsen your infarct size. And so, and I know a lot of us think, oh, you know, my patient's not a real patient unless they have oxygen yeah. on. They are a real patient. <laughs> so just cut it out with the oxygen yeah. unless they need it. All right, so what about aspirin? Aspirin, unless you have an allergy or some other contraindication like massive doses of anticoagulation, there's really no reason not to give it. Yeah, give aspirin. Okay, yeah. we'll give aspirin. All right, and then what about nitrates? And then nitrates mm -hmm. and morphine, that's where we get into trouble because yes. we, they're preload dilators. And when you dilate out that right ventricle, it needs even more stretch to compensate for that loss of volume. Yeah, so in general, patients with RV infarctions are become preload dependent. So you have to avoid anything that drops preload. So what drops preload? You just said? Uh, we have morphine. Okay. We have nitric. Okay. Calcium channel blockers. All right. Beta blockers. Okay. Um, diuretics. diuretics yeah. yeah. So all of those medications drop preload, so you want to make sure you avoid them. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything else about RV infarctions? So fluid's going to be your go-to, right. right, for fluid's hypertension. Gonna, yeah. All right. And what if, if the fluid doesn't cut it? If fluid doesn't cut it, then you may need an inotrope to get things Ooh. moving forward. A positive inotrope. Positive inotrope, yes. Wait, name some. Uh, big one. The big three are dobutamine, okay. epi, and milrinone. Ah, I love it. Okay. What would be kind of your go-to if you had to choose um, one of them? Personally, I'm a huge fan of milrinone, okay. or AKA Primacor. Primacor. Uh, Right. <laughs> the old name for it. Yeah. But dobutamine is also a great choice as yeah. well. And they both have very good pros and cons to why you'd use them in these types of patients. All right, let's talk about the pros. Okay, so for, let's talk about the pros for dobutamine. For dobutamine. Uh, dobutamine is a great uh, holistic uh, positive inotrope. Okay, positive inotrope. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of vasodilatation, but not very much. Um, but on the negative side, you might see some arrhythmias from it. You may see some tachycardia from it. Okay. And I would say the one other positive about dobutamine, short half-life. The half-life is only two minutes. So if you start dobutamine, your patient gets too tachycardic or they get too hypotensive, shut it off. It's a two minute half-life. Yeah. Okay. That'd be the positives. All right. What about milrinone? So milrinone, you're going to see a decrease in your pulmonary pressures. Okay. Uh, it's a pulmonary vasodilator. Um, you're going to see some positive inotrope from it as well and mm -hmm. some vasodilatation from it. Um, so all 
all good things, um, yeah. but as we've talked about before, one of the negatives to it is it has a long half-life. Yeah, so we're talking like two and a half hour half-life. So patient gets hypotensive, you're kind of up a creep right. without a yeah. battle. So, for quite a while, yeah. Yes, for a while. So I think the big thing about dobutamine, because you can bolus dose dobutamine, I wouldn't bolus dose somebody yeah. that's an RV infarction who's maybe no. blood pressure is a little iffy. I would just start the infusion. And with mm -hmm. all cardiac meds, What's my rhyme? You start the dose low and you bring them up slow. Very important. Any cardiac med, you always start the doses low and you bring them up super slow. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so inferior walmi, we said what leads on the 12 lead? It's two, two three, ABF. ABF. Yeah. Like inferior, inferior right? Inferior. Yes. And then where on the 12 lead could we pick up an RV infarction? So that's when we Ooh. might want to do a right sided right -sided ECG. ECG. So yeah. you're going to do a mirror image yeah. of your normal ECG. So instead of one, one, two, three, four, five across the chest, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five across the other way. The right Six. chest. Yep. Yeah. And there's some tricks and hints in that right sided EKG that'll tell okay. you whether it's right ventricular or not. Okay, tell us. So trick number one, if your V3R is on bigger, the right side, is okay. bigger than V3. V two R. Okay. That's usually a clue. Okay. And then also V four R is your number one specific and sensitive test for whether or not it's an RV infarct. Yeah. And what's weird about that is a lot of people look at it and they're like, well, it has to be contiguous leads. Uh, V four R for some random reason spikes all on its own in the RV infarct without V five R and without V three R. So it is not a contiguous lead. It's just a random specific sensitive test. Yeah, and it's probably the way the right ventricle mm -hmm. is situated in the heart. Because you know your heart doesn't sit up and down. It sits like so it's at an angle mostly. This way. Yeah, yeah, at an angle mostly to the left. But the right-sided leads give you a glimpse toward that right ventricle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so V four yeah. R would give you kind of an upward gaze at it when you yeah. look at it. So, so yeah, but so yeah, okay. so if your V four R is large uh, without contiguous and V three R better than V two R is good clues to just diagnose that in right yeah. side or right ventricular infarct. But bottom line, just inferior wall eyes, just be on the hunt. Be on the hunt for a right ventricular infarction, things you'd watch for, tachycardia, hypotension, treatment, right. fluids, fluids, secondary, and then inotropes. Positive inotropes. Avoid um, preload dilators, morphine, morphine, diuretics, Intro. calciums, uh, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think we got them all. And then, yeah. but but just be just really on your toes. So I think that, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, or? I think it's pretty good. All right, so this is Nicole Kupchik and? I'm Joel Green. And this is 10 Minute Tidbits.